so let, let's say this is a, like if in, in the right direction, if I sort of, you know, throw this and put you on this, this is going to create, you know, it's going to break through, like, you know, through the table if yes. you hit it right. Yes. But obviously with bones, there's, you know, there's joints and they're bent over. So are you saying that the, that the way that you organize like the fascia and the muscles is basically kind of putting those and moving those in the perfect position to create yeah. that force in a, in a right. narrow part? So, so actually, the bone substrate may be weaker than the steel, so just a steel yeah. tube could be stronger than the bone, but pound for pound, as it were, the skeleton is set up through this spiralized force transmission, which is stronger than a just plain cylinder. It's because it's like a spring, I suppose. Well, it's it? like a spring, but it's also, the, it's, it's distributing the lines of force in a manner that, that allows it to, and that's the way that the whole human body is. Right. So the axial loaded bone structure is incredibly strong. If I, if I put a thousand pounds on a femur that's like this and it goes here, that will break relatively easy, right? It's gonna snap. But if I can arrange it so that I'm funneling the force to the floor, you want to be the lightning rod and the conduit of that heaven reaching the earth, and I didn't short circuit somewhere and get hurt mm. or not be able to lift as much. Right. Right? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, so basically, and this is a natural position for the hand to grab something, right? This is a very useful task. Couldn't live without it. Couldn't be human beings without that. Okay, that's how we manipulate the tool. Now, when I don't have that, and I have this, that's an expression of excitement and happy. Yes! It's anger and frustration, right? Both polarities, you go here. This does not create a longitudinal load through the bone. You have a joint here that if I'm here and I'm repetitively doing this, I will inevitably damage this, and these are each on their own, and you'll tend to break one or two of these bones, okay? If I operate my body with intelligence, and I pattern it so that I'm, I'm here, 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 this now creates that triangulation that now... So you've got a fist. For those people who are listening, so you create a fist and you've you create got... a fist where where the middle finger becomes sort of the central axis point or central triangle, right. where the last digit is straight and it's where you would snap the middle finger. Right. You see how it snaps flat? Yeah. The last digit is straight. Yeah. What you do is now you're pinning that into the palm and you're buttressing it. We call it backstopping in the martial science, where now I've got triangles. Triangles are the strongest geometric shape. Mm -hmm. triangle because it just distributes it to the other angle right. so that right there creates a new opportunity that where where tension in the hand actually increases the fluidity and mobility of the proximal joint because I have a circuit okay. through the skeleton where the flexor force which is associated with the fear and the extensor force which is like the strong fight they now cooperate. Mm. So you're taking you know, the reflex of like, ah, and you're pinning that in to make you stronger and faster. So is it like if, if it was this figure eight, let's say it was a pipe and there was yeah. fluids going through it, are yep. you saying that by, by doing this, you're kind of allowing it to perfectly go, whereas if you're doing that, it kind of stops and it can't continue Correct. to... Correct, yes. You're cutting it off, do that. You're cutting off and breaking the circuit. This is where you will have the failure. Okay. And you cannot integrate the flexor strength with the extensor strength to the maximum degree. Okay. And it is a profound differential such that if you squeeze this as hard as you can, the shoulder is clunky. It doesn't move well. It'll tend to click. It won't feel good. But you do this. Oh, wow. It's un unbelievable. All right. And you see, the reason I know this stuff is I invented the BOSU ball. And that, I worked my ass off for three years to get that thing into orbit where it was just like, okay, I know this thing's gonna run forever now. I license it, mailbox money. What day is it? Don't matter. All right, what do you wanna eat for dinner? What you want? Kids college paid for. Takes a lot of stress off life. Not many people have that American dream 
and I hit it, right? And I moved to San Diego, I don't surf because I can't be the best in the world. So why am I gonna waste any time in it? When I have to be the best, I'm competitive. And I'm not better than anybody at anything on this planet. You pick an activity and there's another person who's better than me. Oh shit, what the hell am I gonna do? What did you decide you wanted to be the best at then? I wanna be the world's foremost expert on the subject of balance measured by locomotion. That's what I said to myself when I invented the BOSU ball and I recognized the opportunity that I would have all day, every day, for as many years as it takes <laughs> with an objective, measurable, tangible thing which is called time. So A to B, is it faster or is it slower? Click, click. A to B to C, to D to E to F, faster or slower? And is, so in, in everything that you're looking at, and we could come onto your products in a bit, but whenever you look at something, a, a movement, a sports-specific outcome, are you thinking in this figure of a, like conceptually, I'm trying to sort of dumb down a very mm -hmm. complicated yes, yes. idea, but are you sort of thinking of this, this figure eight and, and looking at, okay, how can I create this movement or tools to perform that movement so that I've got the most efficient way of that figure eight. And does that, is that figure eight, are you looking at that in the, in the hands, in the arms, in the body, in the legs and the feet? Are, they, are, they, are there lots of these eights everywhere in your yeah, mind? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes there are. And what I would say is you use the figure eight until you get across the river and then you're no longer thinking figure of eight. Okay. So figure of eight, okay, got it, right? Figure of eight, okay, got it. The key is now, can you do it? Okay. And you have to do repetitions to do it. And that's why a simple length of rope is the Rosetta Stone. Because what does it do? It takes the organs of function, the smartest body part on the body except for some things on the face, are the hands. And the hands have the greatest capacity to do more things than anything else on the body. Mm. You could argue that the tongue and the mouth can do a lot too. But the hands can do more things and more functional for getting things that you are able to put than things in your mouth that you need to do, mm. right? So the rope integrates the figure of eight distally, mm -hmm. which now ha has influence on the proximal. And, and this is, is not a popular opinion, but it's gonna become <laughs> the only opinion, right, in time. I have a lot of confidence, uh, which is earned. But there was an exercise that was sort of foist upon the industry in 2007, right around that time frame. And it was called the Paloff Press. Mm -hmm. And it, the, the, I, the exercise is, okay, we know that the core doesn't generate power. We know that we have to be super stiff and stable, right? We know these things. Yeah, over here, but not over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand 50-50, perfectly flat. You're gonna take a, a band here, and it's gonna, or, you know, tension here, and it's gonna go directly here. And now I'm gonna decrease, or decrease my leverage advantage by bringing it out here. And it's doing this. And I'm 50-50, I'm squeezing everything I've got. Okay, you're getting better at freezing and not having the capacity to funnel force to the ground because what this does is it uproots you. Mm -hmm. And in martial art, Tai Chi, they say never 50-50. Create the flat space, boom. Mm -hmm. The whole key to it is you gotta get, you gotta pick a side if you're gonna be moving well. Mm -hmm. And it changes when it's axial load. So axial load, very appropriate. Transverse, horrible. In, in the type of in, in what you're pro in. in what you're programming your nervous system to do in right. the moments that matter, where millimeters and milliseconds are the difference between a catastrophic injury and a touchdown. Right. There are more non-contact injuries that are happening in sports at the highest level. It's epidemic. Now, train all these guys with the intensity and the authority of the peer-reviewed science. Weck, oh, he's a quack. <laughs> Snake oil salesman, charlatan. He made the Bosu ball, that little sissy tool. That is what we are up against: is the male ego and the fascination with strength and size. Mm -hmm. And because I don't have the strength, but you don't, and size, you don't, you don't disagree with strength and size. No, no, I want bigger, faster, stronger, of course. But are you saying then that, that strength I'm and saying, size comes after 
the No, no. The what I'm saying is your ability to utilize the strength and the size functionally is what counts. Okay. Okay, I don't care how strong you are. If you're doing pal off presses and you don't know what I know, I will beat you up. Mm -hmm. I don't care how big you are, I will beat you up. Fight and flight. I'm faster than a lot of 25 year olds, I'm 53. <laughs> and I'm not powerful, I got a replaced hip. I'm not flexible. I'm not big, I'm not strong. But, Technique. But you, but in, I in, use with, every ounce of my being to be here and now with confidence and authority that you're not gonna beat me up. Yeah. So, and, it, and in crisis, I'm useful. <laughs> right, I'll put you on my shoulders, I'll carry you as far as you need to go. Why? Because I know how to be balanced. There's something called the same side stride. What's that? Same side stride is I got to carry something heavy. Okay. Oh, I'm going to put it on this shoulder. That's the high side. It stays the high side. I'm going to keep my head over this foot. Mm -hmm. And when it's on the ground, I'm balanced. And now because of that spiral and that, now I can lift this foot and I'm still balanced. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to change. Boom, boom, boom. And this is something that you will figure out if your intellect doesn't get in the way. <laughs>